Well, good morning, Max. Good morning, how are you? I'm good. It's great to see you uh, signing on yet again for Working Football Club. Third third season now. Yeah, three. Yeah, third season. Um, very lucky. Obviously, I was at the season before as well, so it's probably my fourth in all. Yeah, so really right. lucky to be here. And just looking forward to another season, really. And uh, we, we did a similar thing two years ago, I think it was, yeah. when you first came back. Was it two years or three? Whatever it was. And I said to you, uh, why have you chosen to come back to Woking? And one of the things you were very clear about was that you felt you had unfinished business, point to prove. Have you proved the point? Uh, no, I wouldn't say not at all, really. Um, promotion was a great step in proving the point, which was good. Um, last season, we've done really well as a team. Um, I was probably quite quiet before you know, the run-in towards the last season, but... I mean, towards the end of last season, I thought I was probably one of the better players. So it's just trying to follow on from that this season. Um, no, I wouldn't say I've got a, a point to prove, but I think at the same time, a player always has a point to prove every day. So, yeah, I think everyone's gagging to get back really with all this virus stuff and just really looking forward to it. Been training, you know, with a couple of teammates um, on my own, but it's it's nice to be. You want to get back in a team environment, and yeah, really looking forward to that. Really. Yeah, sure. Um, I, it, I may be wrong about this, but uh, if you have a point to prove, um, was the point that you wanted to prove the fact that you'd never properly been a Woking player because you weren't given the opportunity by, yeah, by the management at the time? Yeah, may be fair, and obviously injuries at the time under, under Gary, but um, yeah, look, I played 40, 50 games in the National League South, scored a lot of goals, got a lot of assists and got promoted. Um, wanted to play more last season, again injuries and a bit of loss of form so yeah I'm sure like I always say I think if I play 40 to 50 games a season I know I'm going to score goals, set pieces, things like that, get assists so yeah that's probably the goal this season just to play more games and just trust my ability really. And the point I'm driving at is I'm, I'm asking if you feel that you're a proper Woking player now. Oh 100% yeah 100% Good. this is you know, I live 15 minutes up the road. Yeah. The manager now is, you know, is a part, of, a huge part of the community and the football club itself. So I've always felt like a working player um, upon my return, and you know, the success we've had in the last two years relative to the budget and you know what kind of you know the size, of, not size of the club, but like I said, the size of the budget we've had, we've overachieved massively. So yeah, 100%. I feel a part of the club and want to be a part of the club going forward as well. And I guess for everyone that, that comes back. Um, there's another point to prove, which is that last season was no fluke and that we could possibly have made the playoffs had we had the opportunity. Yeah, of course. Obviously, we didn't know going into that Barnet game how big that game no. ended out to be. It's a bizarre finish to the season. And obviously, we missed out quite you know, quite closely on um, points per game and stuff like that. So, you know, and obviously, speaking to the manager earlier and yourself, we, we had a lot of games left with teams above us. And on paper, we were... You know, getting big results against the bigger teams, you know, and we we're probably slipping up with the lower league team. So, you know, our destiny was in our hands. So, to have it snatched so abruptly from us was a bit weird, a uh, bit of a strange feeling. Um, but yeah, definitely motivation for this season. I don't see why not. We can't, you know, we can go, you know, that little bit, a bit, bit further, really. Good. Um, I think it'd probably be fair to say that injuries, at the very least, disrupted your season last year, last season. If not spoiled it, <coughs> is that too strong? Uh, I wouldn't say spoiled it, but you know, it's always a little bit of a damper, dampener on things. Um, like I always say, I think a player gets probably match fit after five or six, 90 minutes in a row, and I was just starting to get that towards the end of the season, you know. Um, managed to break my way in, just obviously, I'll never stop working hard and training and things like that, and even when I get 10, 15 minutes or whatever it is, I'll, I'll, I'll work, my, work my socks off. So, yeah, towards the end of the season, it was, I, was, I was coming good, I think, and just driving in the role just behind the striker you know sometimes I do a job for the manager on the wing it's probably not my strength and I think you know I gather from some of the fans and things like that and obviously my dad's probably a big fan as well that um, it's not my strength you know going down the wing and getting crosses in so um, yeah my strength's behind the striker but obviously I'm always willing to do a job for the manager um, wherever I'm picked but I'd love to play behind the striker lots of games and um like I said, I'm sure I'll score goals, hopefully. So, You've obviously been reading my bit of paper here because my next question says position this season, question yeah, mark. So yeah. 
that's you've made it very clear uh, where you'd like to play. Do you, do you think that's what Dows has in mind for you, or do you not know I think yet? so, yeah. No, I think he says both. He says, that's why I want you to play off the striker, but you, you've got to accept that you know, I might have to play out wide sometimes, and I'm fine with that. Obviously, great signing in Matt Jarvis. I mean, there's no better man to learn off going down the wing and getting good crosses than him. But I think towards the end of last season, we had a really good understanding in the midfield of Kane and, and Sean, and obviously some of the loanees who come on loan, and... We, we put in big performances, you know, away at Notts County, away, uh, away at big teams, and just getting that that um, chemistry right in midfield, knowing when to press and things like that. We started really clicking towards the end. So, yeah, just hopefully we can build on that this season. Great. Let's turn to uh, broader issues now. You've been getting involved with coaching with the academy. Have you been yeah, enjoying that? Really good. Um, I've been coaching for four or five years. So, but really young young yeah, players yeah so I feel like the natural development for me now is to you know coach older um, older players talk about tactical side of the game that, that interests me far more now so um, yeah just started with Scott Harrison last season towards the end of last season getting involved in matches but more just the day-to-day -day training really and looking to kick on from that um, doing my B license in uh, August so we'll start that um, I'm not sure if that's going ahead with all the virus thing, but it might, yeah. be, might be online. I know Craig Ross did it online. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. We'll continue that this year. Um, well, in what, what, can in I... what capacity, I'm not too sure at the minute, because obviously it'll be a, it'll a part-time role. But too, yeah. I think Scott's really keen, obviously, as a player in the first team, to have that pathway, clear pathway for the young lads. It's been brilliant. And obviously, I've seen Sam here today, and it's great to see some of those guys thriving. Yeah. Um, can I ask what the B licence is and where it sits in the hierarchy of coaching qualifications? Yeah, so there's obviously foundation courses right to the beginning, but the first step on that is level one, which like anyone can do. Then you've got your level two, which thankfully, as a apprentice at Wickham, like we have to do it anyway. Right. So that's the second ladder. Then UEFA B is the third step. They call it uh, level three now. UEFA A is above that, so you need that to be in like maybe Gaffer's shoes or Scott's shoes. And then the final one's the pro license, where you have to have it in the Premier League, and you'll have to get invited onto that. So it's just the next step on the ladder, really. Um, but I think the step up from level two to level three is like a lot of level two's technical work, and level three is now engaging with an eleven-a-side team, how things solve problems on a pitch and things like that. So right. yeah, I'm excited to get on it, really. And um, it kind of dovetails in me finishing my. Broadcasting a journalism degree, which is in the autumn. You're reading my notes again. Well, I know you've got a good note, so <laughs> we've got a good relationship. So, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, um, I've got two more modules on that degree, and then I'm done, um, which, you know, is two years has flown by, really. It's a yeah. three year course, but it's, um, it's with the PFA, so they've, you know, fast tracked it for two years. So, the, just my goals away from football is just to get those two things sorted before I'm 30 and decide maybe after football right. hopefully I go beyond 30 but um, well I really hope so but um, you know how it is so just to have those things under my belt and go from there really so sure sure and you've also been doing some quite a lot of one-to-one -one sessions recently yeah going so really well I started it before lockdown and lockdown came at the worst time really so had to just stop it but yeah a lot of it's in um, in Woking um, I put some sessions up on on social media and things like that really enjoying it you know because Obviously, group sessions at the minute, no one can do them. I think it's like five players and one coach at maximum. So these one-to-one -one sessions anyway, players touch the ball yeah. way more than you yeah. would in an, an 11 side game or like training. So, you know, the clients have had really improving rapidly in a short space of time. So and it's great to see. I think as a coach, that's one of the most fulfilling things really. So, And if anybody sees, hears this and they fancy uh, Getting yeah. involved in one of those sessions. Yeah, just contact you via Twitter or Twitter, Instagram, anything like that. Um, yeah, I don't really, I don't have a, a business name at the minute because it's obviously started small. But like I said, it's snowballing quite quickly. So, and you know, it's been a, a godsend for me really because everyone's been furloughed around in my family and things like that. So, to get out outside when the weather's been mostly good, apart from this week. You know, it's not too much complaint really. Sure. Coaching football, being outside, it's, it's, it's the life. So Yeah, you, you briefly mentioned Sam Evans, who's here this morning as well. I've spoken to him already, and I, I asked him if he'd been to any of your sessions, and he said he'd been to one, but he did say that you were a very good coach. I asked him 
what makes a good training session from a player's point of view. Now you could obviously answer that as well, clearly, but yeah. I want to ask you what makes a good session from a coach's point of view. Well, it's a great question, actually. And obviously, being a player, I know what I really enjoyed, yeah. so I yeah. can hopefully give that back to the players. But as a coach, you want to put on sessions that are going to obviously help your team advance in the future and, and play well, but you've got to make it competitive, make it fun. I think, especially with younger players, they love competition, even yeah. if, if it's against themselves or if it's against their teammate. Um, that's how they, you know, engage and, and thrive and stuff. But um, I like now. I'm looking at trying to do like precision specific things. So been looking at things online, and you know, I looked at one Diego Simeone at Atletico Madrid. He's doing individual defender drills for his defenders, um, and I think um, you know, not many coaches do that, and we do it here at Woking and. You can do things for a fullback getting crosses in. You can do things for a centre back winning headers and doing quick feet. You can do finishing drills, obviously for strikers, but scanning drills, looking over your shoulder for midfielders. So things like that, I really enjoy. And um, as a coach, I think those specific things add up. And then on the, on a bigger pitch, it, you know, you get the players improve loads. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to really. Right. Um, I know we've we've got. Uh a three-man management team with tons of coaching ability and experience between them. But do you ever see the possibility of coaching the first team squad? Well, it's definitely definitely a dream. You've got to set goals for yourself. Definitely a dream to manage a team at one point. I think at a minute I'd see myself as maybe a number two, but I'm not sure. Um, Ian's a great one to learn off. His sessions are really good. So, yeah, um, definitely. A dream in the league, in the non on non league, it's very, very ruthless though, isn't it? It's a horrible. It's <laughs> yeah. the worst business you can pick in. We're probably mad for picking it anyway. So, you what, know, what about during the course of this season or maybe next season? Dallas would absolutely string me up alive if I was to coach here. So, um, under him, he says there's too many coaches at half time when we're losing in a match anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, no, I just shut up and listen to him really and. Uh, you know, if you ask me my advice, which doesn't happen too often, I'll always give it. But um, yeah, I think it's important that he's in charge. Ian and Martin, they work really well as a team. Um, obviously, he's got a close relationship with Josh and some other senior players, so um, he taps into them whenever he needs to. But he's in charge, and I'll, I'll let him be the boss. <laughs> That's probably politically very wise. Uh, you mentioned the, the degree. What are the two modules you've got left? I've got to do a placement, so hopefully, right. which is really hard at the minute as well. Do you have to find that yourself? Or yeah, you? so obviously I might, fingers crossed, I've, I've messaged him during the off-season, uh, hopefully Martin or someone else. I've got good contact. Dave Richardson is a fan of the club. Yes, yes. So um, we had to do a placement last year. I did it in radio. I'd like to do it in TV just to see both yeah. sides. So but obviously it's difficult with the virus at the minute. So yeah, hopefully yeah. I'll get something sorted. And I think the other one's... Uh, like a journalism project, so quite straightforward. But um, it's been well, you, we can we can file them off for September. It's been backdated because of the virus, so still a bit of time. But yeah, I need to need to crack on with it. I suppose uh, it seems to me you've got a ready-made subject matter right in front of you, which is <coughs> the effects of the virus on non-league football. Yeah, one hundred percent. We've had lots of um, essays, a lot of circling racism, which obviously been in the news a lot, and. Yeah they were just really easy to kind of crack on research and things like that find loads of references out obviously at the minute so yeah it's it's a crazy time at the minute um lots of things people could be doing um to look you know so yeah um like i said two modules in it feels like i started it last week so yeah, it'd be really yeah. good to have that under my belt I'm an honors degree which is something i wanted to do so yeah well congratulations on what you've achieved so far i'm sure you'll uh, finish it strongly. Uh, Kevin Betsy did the same thing when he was here, and he got a first. So you got mean, that to I live up say, to. <laughs> I won't say what I'm averaging, but it's something around there. So oh, good for you. We'll um, we'll see. Obviously, the the placement module is the biggest module on the whole course. Yeah. So although I might be averaging a first now, if I have a bad module, it could bring it down. So yeah, but you know, two to go, and you know, fingers crossed. So. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time this morning. It's wonderful to see you back at, no at the uh, Laithwaite Community Stadium and look forward to seeing you playing this season. Thank you very much, David. Cheers.